Wati ya nkule wazisemi sango jana gomala mkampala, mmaso gomala msa Alex Ajij. Echi agena mmaso na huku ulirizo msango goku wamba, wamono huku ta Suzan Magara. Ogovu nani buwaba antu omuenda. Omujulizo woku na Johnny Magara, tata wamogenzi Suzan Magara. Ategeze za koti nti oluva njimala huku wambi wa kwa mwala wawe, mochuala we imachulate Magara. Yafune si munge na kuzo mwezi munaana wa mwezo guo kubiri. Omaka guanku mibiri ya abiri mumu naana. Okuveri wa mtu guwa tamanya. Ngoni ya bate geza anti ya yaline mwala wawe. John Fitzgerald Magara. Swear that. Swear that. The evidence I shall give. Touching the matter before court now. Touching the matter before court now. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. Nothing else but the truth. Nothing else but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. <coughs> my Lord, before we proceed, we have a prayer to make. My Lord, this is a much of pleasure. Do you know sir? John Fitzgerald Magara. John Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald. My Lord, if you have got me, please, I pray that for security, what you do? I'm a business person. I do business between Hoyman and Kampala. spirit, produces sugar, uh, we run a hotel in Hoima, yes. spirit. What do you mean spirit? This is alcoholic beverage. And crystal sugar. In Kampala we run an office that does uh, marketing and procurement and also handles a lot of our logistical needs for those for the factory. Susan Magara. 
Susan Magara was my daughter. She's now deceased. She was working at this office at Mengo. Where was she laid to rest? She was laid to rest in Hoima, Kitoba sub county. Kitoba sub county. Kitoba. Kitoba. Did you attend the burial? I was in attendance. Second day, a call was received by my wife. Uh, somebody saying, um, I'm calling to tell you. Okay, maybe before someone calling you, calling your wife, who gave you the information that Susan is missing? Uh, Robert Magara conveyed a message to our, our home. Uh, I was not able to receive uh, the telephone. I was not able to pick, but somebody came to and knocked on my door, my uh, Robert's younger brother, and told me that this is what is, has happened. Susan is missing. Her car has been found. Her two telephones are in the in the car. What time was that, and where were you at that time? I was at home. I'd gone to bed. It was about 11:30 p.m. I decided to drive to Kampala. Wait, you were at home where? At home in, uh, that is uh, our factory in, in Kitova houses both our home and the factory. In which district is Kitova? Hoima district. So at that time you were still in Hoima? I was still in Hoima. Yes, and so you have received the information at 11 p.m. that Susan is missing. What was next? I decided to come to Kampala. What time did you reach Kampala? I reached Kampala at about 3 a.m. You have to proceed. Uh, that's when I informed to the people at home of what had happened. Which people did you inform? My wife who was at home. What's her name? Immaculate Magara Kavadulis. Uh, then the following day, uh, we went into trying to get as much help as we could. Uh, through the security agencies. Nothing much was uh, coming out of the airport until we received a call. Where did the phone come from and who's phone, to whose phone? It was coming to my wife's phone and this person was saying that she's, he's the one in the custody, whose custody Susan is. Mm -hmm. 
somewhere and uh, those phone calls continued before we could get them to be recorded. So what message were the, were the callers conveying before you started recording them? They, they mentioned that they wanted money paid, whose figure they had mentioned at a later call. Uh, they did not mention how it was supposed to be paid. Why? 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 Yes. Uh, money was being paid so that she's released. Who was released? Susan Magara is released. Oliver Nimoyawa sabi haka deka dora kamweza Amerika. Okusobolo okubawa muwala wawe. Nga sente zino bali bateke duwa kuzitu wala kulugudu rema saka. Echi intuwa chita asoboka. We went on back and forth. I'd avoided the negotiation until a little later. About the third call. That's when I started talking to this person and uh, he mentioned that he needed one million dollars. One million dollars. Was that on your, call, on your phone? No, it was still on my wife's phone, Immaculate Magara's phone. So uh, si <coughs> since they were calling your wife, how did you know the content of this conversation? Uh, we used to listen in, it was in loud, loud, loud. As uh, they would talk to her, I would be listening to what they're saying. What do you mean it would be loud? It was a loudspeaker. You, you should put it in loudspeaker mode. The number is the young chairman who is the chairman of Margaret Magara. The number is the loud. The number is the same as the other one. Okay, was it the same voice that had earlier been called? It remained the same voice. The number is the same as the other one. Yes, continue. At one time, my wife offered a hundred million, which was turned down. Um, he said he was going to give a discount of fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, nine, yeah, fifty thousand was a discount, so it was nine hundred and fifty thousand to be paid. Um, some time passed and. Uh, he kept asking, have you found the money? What, what time passed? Could be talking about two, three days. Yes. And uh, my wife would go back to say, we are still looking for the money. thousand dollars. Yes, dollars. So I later, he kept asking whether we had received the money. Uh, as I was consulting uh, the security agencies, uh, we agreed. On a, on a figure. It was private. Uh, and they said offer two hundred thousand dollars, which I offered to the gentleman on one of the calls. And I said we have found two hundred thousand dollars, which money do we have in our possession. So who contacted the other when you offered the two hundred thousand dollars? It was only them who would call us. So he said, I'm going to give you instructions, wait for my call tomorrow. Would you recall that date when he said that? That was on the 14th oh. of Feb. Which year? 2018. So on the 15th, as the following day, he instructed me to drive my wife's car, which was a Vitiz, um, to drive towards uh, Masaka, take Masaka Road, and he would give me instructions after. You were supposed to drive there with what? 
to drop the money. I had the money in a bag. $200,000 US dollars. Maybe how did you raise that money? I raised the money through some of the balances we had in the bank. Uh, and I went to the bank to give me, to allow me to draw more than I had on the, on the account. Uh, it was kind of an arrangement of that nature. Uh, we, are, we appealed to some of our customers to make advance payments for later supply. And then we put together that amount of money. The family that is immaculate, and my wife and myself, and the bigger family of the, Mag of the Magaras. Yeah, I drive on Masaka Road, uh, but I contacted uh, the security people. I told them what they had been instructed to do. When I reached at a signpost of welcome to Mpiji, they asked me to pick a telephone on that signpost. I may not recall very well, but it was in the afternoon about 3 p.m. Uh, so they called, said, you have the money? And I told them that I have it. But during that time, uh, the security people appeared and was seen by the person who was trying to to receive that money. Yes. Then he called me and said, you have broken our agreement, please go back. On whose phone did he call? He called on this, this the small line that I had, that I had picked. No, no, no. I picked a telephone. To, it had a line in it. Oh. You it had a line. Phone? A phone with a line in it. It was an Airtel line. So the phone was on that signpost. On that signpost. Exactly the signpost is welcome to Mpiji. Where exactly along the signpost? Uh, down? Yeah, down on the ground. Do you remember the make of the phone? I, I may not remember. They were small, small, these small phones, Katochi type. So that was the last call that I got from him after not being able to deliver the ransom and I drove back home. Oloko manti ya liyale mededuo kutusa sente zinongawe ya liyala gidua. Oliva nyumabamu gamo kugenda kusundiori ya mafuta ya hazen na masuba. Wakusanga obo bako obwalibu motere duwa mkavera. We waited for them to contact us again. Which they later did on the 17th. I was instructed again of February 2018. I was instructed again to drive to on Bombo Road. So I drove up to Matuga. As I was approaching the trading center of Matuga, I was instructed to drive into a petrol station. And I don't remember the petrol station. And in the process, I was driving back to Kampala instead, after getting to out of the petrol station. I said, drive on. Petrol station. Then I was instructed to drive out. 
But I'd traveled with the policeman who was in the back of the car. Again, it was the BTs belonging to my wife, Margaret Magara. Who was insisting on that bit? This was the person, the male voice that we hear again and again uh, instructing us, negotiating for the ransom. Have you suggested that uh, the vehicle to them or they just knew the vehicle? They knew the vehicle. So I was driving towards Kampala, it tells me now, turn on your right. It was a short distance, probably like 500 meters away. And I drove into a Maram road, could have made probably two or three kilometers inside and he asked me to sign uh, to, to stop by a signpost whose name it was a, a signpost of a school whose name I'm, I'm, I don't remember I had he instructed me to pick another telephone at that signpost he was calling my wife's number. At that time I was using my wife's number. I was, I was using her telephone. It's the one he called. I picked another phone. That is when the policeman opened the door and came out of the car. And they must have been watching. And they didn't call back again. So at that particular moment, they never called you back. The moment the gentleman jumped out of the boat. That's right. So what followed next? On 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 the 19th, in the afternoon, could have been 3 p.m. They called, and uh, he said, "You have totally failed on a." Agreeing with, with me. They called on the 19th of? On, on the 19th of February 2018. So we have a message from your daughter. When you said they called, uh, the same gentleman, the same male voice. He, he asked me to go to hospital station on the Entebbe Road. At uh, Namasuba Bata Bata. And he, he told me there was a paper bag, polythene bag, that was at the sign of uh, that petrol station. The sign. The sign. The sign. The house sign, the big one, that is just by the roadside. <laughs> that it contained a message from our daughter, <laughs> Susan Magara. Before going to pick it, I had requested police to come and assist. Uh, they delayed a bit because of uh, the distance probably and the traffic jam on that road. So I decided to go and pick it myself. Then brought it home. And uh, I did not attempt to open it. I dropped it as soon as I got into the gate. I put it on the ground. Okay, can you first describe the package? Oh. The package was a small one, something that you would carry, very light. But, it, but there was a small box inside. Box package, probably five centimeter, five centimeter by five centimeter. 
It was white, I think. I think it was white. I did not touch it again until uh, after I dropped it in the compound. And uh, I involved those who were around. One of them was a security personnel who had been attached to me. And uh, my daughter, Renata Magara, my sister, Flora Magara, witnessed as Renata Magara, uh, my sister, Flora Magara. Uh, they used the security guard to, to open up to open up the, uh, the box. That's when uh, Renata Magara said there are two fingers in the box. There was a memory card where they had written a must watch clip. I did not watch the clip. Why did you watch the clip? I saved myself from the trauma. I didn't see the fingers. I didn't see the fingers. Again, it's the trauma. The trauma that I was avoiding. Did anyone at home watch the clip? None, none watched the clip. The clip was given to security people. The clip, the clip? The, clip, the police and other security agencies they converged at home until late and uh, we gave them everything that was in the that were picked. That is as far as uh, that incident of the 19th went. And uh, later, on the 24th, Nina kuzomweza abili munyo mwezo guo kubili. Umaka guanko mibili abili mumunana. Aba wamba suza ni magala baku bila flora magari simu. Ngoni ya lima ama uomoto. Neba mula gido kutuwa la sento obuka devitano mwitundu bia nina masuwe chintu cheya kola. Wabulo luvanyumaru waka seira. Mualabu ya sangi wanga tidua. Kulugudo rama sanja lulu entebe. On the 24th of February 2018, my sister had been contacted before then on the 22nd. Your sister, what's her name? Flora Magara. Who has contacted her? The same male voice. She was called on that day twice. She was called twice. One call was at 5 p.m. and the other one at 8 p.m. Uh, she, she drove her own car. And uh, where was the We had left out police uh, after some time, uh, thinking that uh, dropping off the ransom would sort out the issue at hand. This is the kidnap and uh, the, the release that we were wishing for. Yes, Flora took the money from Savala, dropped the Savala road, dropped it. And then we then waited. We expected her probably to show up. It was a Saturday. We thought she'd show up on a Sunday. Where were you waiting from? At home. Was she released? She was not released. Her body. I was called. I was called by AIGP, the Akagawa. Before that, I had been called by the president, president of Uganda, the old capital Yes, before that, you had received a call from the president of Uganda. What, what message did he pass on to you? He said you need to go and identify a lady's body with two missing fingers. Yeah, I 
it was on uh, the Entebbe Expressway, on the Kigo side of that expressway, before Kajansi. Yes, you told court that you have also received a phone call from AIG Piakagawa. And he said he was accompanying me to the site. AIG Piakagawa, we have the senior member of the AIG Yes, did he accompany you? He did. <coughs> and uh, I indeed identified the body of Susan Magara. What are you identified? I looked at her face. In your face here? Yes, you looked at her face. I looked at her face and uh, told the police officers who were there that it is her. Did you have the opportunity of looking at any of her hands? No, I did not. Yes, no. yes what followed next? After that, I left the scene. When you were here, well, and started preparing the family for burial. Sorry? I started preparing the, the family for burial. Yeah, we buried on 1st March 2018. Amalaboza agesimu agagambi wokubanga gali geya wamba Susan Magara. Gawere duwa yomo koti. After burial, police came to our home and they requested we surrender our phones for imaging. My, my wife, Immaculate Magara. Did you surrender the phones? Yes, I did, and they did the imaging on site. Which phone were you? Oh, it was a Samsung. And you recall your wife's as well? Yeah, it was also Samsung. The young child had Samsung. Yes, what was the point of interest in your phone? Um, I believe they wanted to pick whatever information that was relevant to the kidnap and murder issue. Susan's kidnap and murder issue that was at hand at that time. And the recordings that we had in there. The recording, the voice recordings that we had uh, maintained in both our phones. What subject? The subject was um, the kidnap, the holding uh, of her, and uh, the ransom that was uh, being negotiated and uh, it was a kidnap saga really. Yeah, how had you obtained the recordings? It, uh, Renata Magara had, he had uh, used the recording device in the phones. She activated them and they started recording automatically whenever anybody would call. What followed next, uh, we just, we, we, we kept uh, wondering how would find the killers. Later, we were told some people had been arrested. Yes, you have an idea of how they were arrested? Um, yeah, they were arrested mainly from uh, Usafi Mosque, that's uh, as far as I know. Um, some images were shared with me. Um, what images? The images. Uh, the images that were shown to me was uh, the investigation they were doing, the matrix especially, yeah. and why they thought this should be the people involved. Yeah. Okay, to take you back to the recordings, after the police had done the images, did you have an opportunity of uh, following up on the recording? There was one recording that kept playing uh, on, on radio. Mm. That one is one I've shared. I don't know with who at that time, but it was one that was captured and kept running on radio. No, I'm talking about in line of the Yes, uh, they told me that uh, some of our recordings had been uh, written out 
and uh, then translated into English. Voices are very clear. It's a voice that uh, that I know that I'll never forget. I know the voice of uh, the other people, especially my wife and myself. I talked to her and told her that we were working hard to get her out of captivity. And uh, it was a short, short, uh, short, short. What form. phone did you use to talk to her? I used my wife's phone. Uh, it was connected. That male voice is the one who handed the, the phone that was using to her. Okay. Um. I told her that we were working hard, we were trying to raise the money and to uh, talk to her uh, 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 captors, to be patient, that money was going to be raised soon. And from her voice, in which state was she? She was uh, in uh, a state of tears. Uh, she was in a state of uh, impatience and she was begging. She told me, please work hard, do it quickly. Doing what? Uh, find the money and uh, pay the ransom. I pray that the be allowed to identify the voices. Amalaboza agesimu agagambi woku banga gali geya wamba Susan Magara gawere dua yomo koti oruddo luvuna lobadde ko cheru ebuziza ku mujuri zono you reported a police statement on page 3 and you indicated that you suspect an obia kami Yes. 
Ndira kuyumkuyo simu ya lia manyikuni unyoro. Kaka sante lia manyikuni unyoro. And it is true also that you will not know this person. No, I do not know him. Ndira kaka sante mungu jamani. One last question. Would I be correct that this person is a human? Yes, I am. From all the audios that uh, have been played, whenever you stated that was a kidnapper, also, was it one same voice or they kept alternate different It's the same voice, my lord. Uh, secondly, did you personally record these uh, audios, which was another person who recorded them? And the audios were automatically recorded by our phones. Are you the one who activated the recording voices on your phone or it was a different person who did I mentioned earlier it was activated by my, uh, our daughter, Renata Magara. Uh, in your testimony, you stated that the kidnappers faulted, found fault with uh, disobeying their instructions. On one hand, on the uh, at one time, uh, security showed up. That's right. When you have just uh, retrieved the, the phone device. That is true. Uh, were you in contact? Were you coordinating properly with police? Why, why did the police do this prematurely? Uh, we were coordinating. I was in touch with them. And they also are able to track our phones whenever they would, uh, would, would, make, would receive calls they start following how we're moving why how come the same thing happened uh when you're moving was it bongo road yeah first it was Masakaro, then bongo road the same thing happened the same thing happened you had a police officer in the car who yes. jumped out prematurely yet the same the similar incident had happened First, where was this? Going home. We are not going to talk to that question. It was not in the control of the business. And it cannot answer. It being that he was not the one in the field in the field. Uh, from your testimony, it's apparent uh, voice which you are communicating with all through the kidnaps saga was a manure. Now my question is, was that person ever identified? Never been tried? Never identified. 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 He was identified. Who is he? Is he among the accused persons? He's not. Who is he? But he said he identified him. He identified him. Does that mean he is a neighbor somewhere in Korea? No, we he comes from Masindi. Masindi. Prior to this kidnap, did you know him or his mother? No, I, know, I know none of them. Um, during your testimony, you also say the person used to take you to drive a uh, I need to understand. Did they know from the first place that your wife drove the BTs or it came from the people? You have known that this guy requested him to go there in the pits of his wife. That voice requested him to drive there with the...
as my colleague was cross-examining, he asked, okay, he read from your statement that you suspected Scovia was part of this. What happened? Uh, it was a relationship with, uh, with uh, Yusuf. Yusuf. Was Yusuf was the last person to talk to Susan. Um, <coughs> Mr. Magara, during the time you used to talk to the person who had kidnapped or who used to communicate with you about dropping the money, uh, did the, was he using one number? Uh, there were several numbers. Uh, these numbers are somewhere in the statement. The numbers that I cannot remember now, but uh, uh, many of these SIM cards, um, many of these numbers were declared to the security report. And uh, two of them were in the physical forms, which we gave to police. Omulamuzi Alex Ajij ayongeza yo musango guno okutusolo na ko rencha nge nakuzo mweza abili mutano okwongera okuguuliriza abantu omwe nabavunani ba musango guno badizidwa kwa alimanda 